Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. We're gonna be talking about um sister wives child. I don't that sounds kind of rude. I was gonna say sister wives star, but then I was like, well, she's not really one of the stars of the show. But then I'm like, well, wow, that just sounds rude. Anyways, you guys know uh Gwendolyn Brown, she is the daughter of Cody Brown and Christine Brown for from the TLC show Sister Wives. She started a YouTube channel a few months ago, and in starting that YouTube channel, she actually started a Patreon as well. And um, once she started her Patreon, another YouTuber named Without a Crystal Ball actually joined the Patreon, and Gwendolyn is now accusing this creator of stealing content that was behind a paywall, and that creator, Without a Crystal Ball, is responding, and she kind of told off on herself. She's like, I apologize for stealing your content. Or, or that you think that I did. So we're going to cover that right now. And I am considering um, covering the 7M, the new documents from the 7M lawsuit. I don't have them yet, so I have to get them and I have to go over them. But we might do that tonight if it's not too late. Yes, that creator would be, without a crystal ball, Katie Joy. So let's go ahead, let's roll the intro, give YouTube time to send out notifications, and then we're going to get into it. Sorry, guys. I feel like my eye has like black makeup all over it. Maybe I'm just seeing something. I don't know. So I had to put a little concealer on real quick just to clean that up. Anyways, let's go ahead. And let's get into it. Um, I do want, before I even get this started, I do want to say that I did watch a few videos um, down the rabbit hole at bedtime, Rennell Smith. And there was a couple other videos that I watched just to kind of really understand what's going on. I will say this, that I heard months ago. Um, word went around probably back in January, February, that Katie was taking content from Gwendolyn Brown's Patreon, which I have a huge, huge, huge issue with because, um, that's not okay. You know, when you put videos up for members, whether it be Patreon members or YouTube channel members, that is specifically for them. And sometimes you will be more candor. In those videos, just because you know, like your, you know, like um, I know, like my members are my loyals. I also know that I have some subscribers that are loyal, that are loyals as well, that can't afford to be members. I understand that, but one thing that you know, like in regards to like those members, you know, like nine times out of ten, they like got your back, and you can be a little bit more candor with them, right? So and it seems like that was the um, thing with Gwendolyn as well, that she was a little bit more outspoken on her Patreon videos. But unfortunately, things that she said on those videos would come out over on Katie Joy's YouTube channel. Um, I did see Wildflower T's video today. I was actually in the chat. Um, when she went live, I actually jumped in the chat. Where's my notes? I want to make sure. Uh, so, okay, so let me tell you guys exactly what's happening here. Um, like I said, I want to say it was like Gwendolyn Brown. Let me see when she started her YouTube channel. Because I want to say it was around the same time that she started her channel, that she started her Patreon. I remember the announcement like, hey guys, I made a Patreon, you know, and it, it was sometime... Well, this does me no good. It says she started her YouTube channel October 19, 2013. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's when she like made the channel, but that's not when she first started uploading. Okay, okay. Gwendolyn Brown first started uploading content to her YouTube channel six months ago. So that would be, yeah, we're in the seven month, seventh month. So that would be around January. So around January is when she started uploading to her um, YouTube channel. She actually started putting the content up and then like a month or so after that, maybe she made a post saying, Hey guys, I made a Patreon. Come join me over on Patreon for more content. Right? So from my understanding of that Patreon, like I said, it's just extra footage, extra videos. Um, and you guys, this is without a crystal balls video that we're looking at right here. This is without a crystal balls response video, and we're gonna go over it. Um, but I think this is actually from her Patreon. 
I, I can't, I, I'm not certain, but I did go to Gwendolyn Brown's YouTube channel and I clicked on every one of her videos and sped through them to see if I saw any setting like this. And I did not. So it, maybe I'm crazy, but it seems like possibly Katie Joy started her video off with a clip video of Gwendolyn Brown from her Patreon. I can't say that to be sure, but I can't find this video. Gwendolyn Brown sitting there with that background saying what she said anywhere else. So I don't know. Anyways, Gwendolyn, four days ago, she made this post to her Patreon. And I reached out to Gwendolyn just to make sure that it would be okay that I shared it. She didn't respond. Um, but down the rabbit hole at bedtime, she reached out to her as well and asked if she could share it. And she was given the green light. So I think Gwendolyn Brown is okay with people sharing this specific post. Because this specific post did come from Gwendolyn Brown's Patreon. I do want to be honest in saying that. And I was not going to do the video. Like, I struggled with it because I was like, I need to show this. Like, if I'm going to do a video talking about Gwendolyn Brown calling out Katie, I need the screenshot of the call out. But I didn't feel comfortable doing that without knowing for sure that Gwendolyn Brown will be okay with people taking something from behind her paywall. That's the very reason she's mad at Katie is because Katie took stuff from behind her paywall. So I don't want to do it either. But I watched down that rabbit hole at bedtime and she said, first off, I reached out to Gwendolyn myself on Instagram and asked her. She hasn't responded yet. Um, but I only reached out to her like two hours ago. But down the rabbit hole at bedtime, she said she reached out and made sure that it was okay that she shared this. And Gwen said yes. So I'm just, like I said, I think everybody has a green light to share this specific post. So this is where it initially started. It was Friday, 6.29 in the evening. And Gwendolyn shared Katie's post. So Katie, without a crystal ball, shared a post about Hillary Spivey. And she says, so Hillary Spivey is the wife to one of the Duggar boys. One of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar's sons. His wife is Hillary Spivey. Anyways, Katie says, Hillary Spivey, I would tag you, but you are a coward and block me. So here are a few things, I and a blank. And then you can't see the rest of the post because Gwendolyn took some um, screenshots that Katie Joy posted on her Facebook page and she laid them over the rest of that specific post. So it, um, the only thing that Gwendolyn really wanted us to see is right here. I would tag you, but you were a coward and blocked me. So this post right here that she put over that is from Katie Joy. And it says, hey, everyone, I'm Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball. And I will not be sharing any videos from this Patreon, nor will I share any details. So this is Katie going into Gwendolyn Brown's Patreon. So when Gwendolyn opened her Patreon, guess who was one of the first to sign up? Yes, Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. And this is what she posted in there. She said who she was, that she was from the YouTube channel Without a Crystal Ball, and that she had no intentions on sharing anything from the Patreon. This is Gwen's space. I contacted her via DM to let her know that I'm here, and she knows that I am here in peace. I am, like all of you, very excited for the kids to find their voices. The only videos I made was a public live from TikTok with her friend, Sarah. I'm not connected to any other YouTubers and can only speak for myself, but I will not share her content from behind a paywall. I do, I do, know, that, I do know that multiple media outlets reported on screenshots that ended up on Reddit from here. Showbiz Cheat Sheets has an article of those messages. I do not work for them. I'm proud of Gwen for her amazing journey and using her voice. So that's what Katie posted, you know, right after she joined the Patreon, that she would not be sharing any of the information. Then she shares this post over here, and you can't see it, and I can't either, but I, can, I think I can see it on my phone. Let me pull it up. I wish I could see it better, but it's kind of blurry. All right, let's see. Okay. Dang it. Um, I can't see it on there either, but what I do know that it says is this second line. This is sometime later, right? This second line literally says, uh, 
Hold on. I did make notes to say what it said. It says something about on her Patreon. Yeah, okay, so the last screenshot is a post Katie put up criticizing Gwendolyn and saying this came from Gwendolyn's Patreon. So right here, you guys can't see it, but it says on Patreon, the something. Um, oh, oh, what she was saying, I'm sorry. I wish, I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to see this, but what she's saying right here is on Patreon that, that Gwendolyn had uploaded a video on Patreon. And on Patreon, um, it's not edited the way that it was on YouTube. So she did one video, uploaded the entirety on Patreon, but edited to put it on YouTube. And a lot of the things that she took out, Katie felt was very important and kind of, um, essentially, Katie was saying, Gwendolyn calls her dad out and, and like really calls him out on Patreon for like the abuse and, and talks about Christine's miscarriage and taking the baby out in the backyard and burying it and, you know, putting rocks over and X, Y, and Z, right? Um, so, and she literally says, the second line right here says, on Patreon. The second line literally says, on Patreon, right? So this was after Katie said, I'm here in peace. I'm here in peace. We come in peace. You know, I'm not going to be sharing anything from here. But then she also posts this other picture that Katie Joy posted um, where it says, on Patreon, she posted the full video. So anyways, then she says, this is Gwendolyn saying, just complaining slash gossiping. Katie Joy blocked me on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. Otherwise, I will call her out. But instead, I'm going to not be the bigger person. Though I feel like I am being the bigger person by not writing 10 articles like she would. She blocked me because she's a coward. Proceeds to block me. Also, she says she never shared anything from my Patreon and clearly lied. Anyways, this is now a Katie Joy hate page. Love, unless you are Katie Joy, Gwendolyn, right? So, that is kind of what it is. And uh, right after Gwendolyn makes this post on her Patreon, Katie starts posting on her Facebook account. And uh, so this was four days ago. Four days ago, Gwendolyn posted that to her Patreon. Four days ago, Katie made this post. I wonder why you can't see things that good. Okay, point blank period. I am tired of the BS and all the lies. I don't report lies. I don't lie. I'm not being sued by anyone new. I think when Gwendolyn was like calling her out for like taking her content that's behind a paywall, I think people was like, you should sue her or something along those lines. So she's like, I'm not being sued by anyone new. The only dude I'm dealing with is an alleged cult leader that is accused of doing bad things. If you ride with people that do bad things, despite me, I will literally pray for your soul. Who are you praying to, Katie? I'm just curious. Well, I guess, well, uh, never mind, because I guess people that don't believe in God do believe in other things that they could pray to. A am I correct in saying that? I will literally pray for your soul. I am not religious, but I know those of you that, that do ride with these fools generally generally are. I'm going to keep doing me and P.S. Stop jamming me about creators that talk about me. I don't care. I don't know. I don't know who needs to hear this, but contrary to loud voices on the internet, I'm not getting sued again. I'm not wasting my time on a person whose social media following is smaller than mine. So one could wonder, is she talking about Gwen? Like, who's she talking about? But that post did come right after Gwendolyn put up the Patreon post. So... Then she pretended to act like she didn't know what happened. Um, then she made a post pretending to not know what was going on with Gwen. Let's see. It's either here or it's on her actual YouTube page. Let me see. All right, let me check. Anyways, on the post, she says something along the lines like, of like, I don't know what's happening. Why am I getting all these comments about Gwendolyn? Can somebody let me know? Like, drop it 
in the comment section below. Let me see if I have it in my phone. I thought I, oh yeah, she says, hey friends, a subscriber left a comment on my recent video about Gwendolyn Brown. Is some kind of drama going on with her Patreon? I'm not a Patreon and haven't been for months. I did search her Patreon account and noticed that there was, that her once robust Patreon numbers, which exceeded, which exceeded over 6,000, were down to under 2,000. Notice the um, little comment right there. Like, what I did notice is she used to have over 6,000 followers, or Patreons, but now she only has 2,000. The account also said this creator has not posted any content. Anyone has the details on what's going on? I haven't been watching her. I haven't been watching her season reactions on YouTube because she's going through older seasons. Comment below. So she tried to act like she didn't know. Um, she didn't know, you know, what was going on. The people was leaving her comments. But Katie Joy always knows what's going on. And hold on, let me correct this if I am wrong. Hillary Spivey is not a Duggar boy's wife. She is Justin's mother-in-law. Wait, then wait. So it's the mother of one of the girls because I know one of the guys is married to um one of the Duggar kids. Okay, so Hillary Spivey, Spivey is the matriarch of the Spivey family. She is the wife of Robert Robert Spivey, and they have six kids. Because I want to make sure I get this right. I don't. They have six kids. Um, who is the daughter that's married? Because one of the daughters isn't one of the daughters married to. Am I, did I just pull this complete? Claire, yes. Isn't Claire married to one of the, Justin Mary? Okay, okay, okay. So I was confusing Claire with um, Hillary. My bad. I do apologize for that. Thank you for, thank you for bringing my attention to that because I don't want to put out like incorrect info. So I do apologize. So Katie was basically calling out a Duggar mother-in-law. But Gwen took that screenshot and was like, you know what? I would call you out, but you got me blocked because you're a coward. Katie has responded, you guys. Um, she did do a video. And like I said while I go, I legit think in the beginning of the video is a clip from Gwen's Patreon. I don't know that for sure. But I, like I said, I went to Gwendolyn's page and went through all the videos. Like quickly, like zap through them, and I could not find any video of her with that background setting or anything saying what she said. I guess it's possible I skipped over it, but it, it it's really looking like to me that there's a possibility that Katie started her her defense video playing a video from Gwendolyn's channel. This I want to talk more about what I've been through, especially the situation, and I definitely. Displeasure of knowing, and I would strongly advise against taking anything he says as fact. I would advise against giving him any kind of support, even if you're just watching the kind of content he puts out, because it does encourage him to continue. Once I can follow, I don't know who she's talking about here, but I couldn't find anything else. And like I said, um, Gwendolyn does talk more freely on her Patreon, so I feel like if Gwendolyn was going to tell people, like, "Hey, be beware of this creator or this p person," she would probably do it on her Patreon versus doing it like. On her YouTube channel in a whole, right? So, anyways, y'all, let me let me go over this video because it's it's kind of wild. So, Katie, she claims that she has no idea why this is happening. She has no idea why Gwendolyn does not like her. What she says, she says. So, I heard last week that Gwendolyn made a post on her Patreon saying that she really wanted to talk to me. But couldn't because I have her blocked. Well, that is literally Katie is having her followers believe that Gwendolyn wanted to reach out and talk to her, but couldn't because Katie had her blocked. Gwendolyn never said anywhere, I want to talk to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She just said, you, you are a um, coward because you have me blocked. She never said, I want to reach out to you and talk to you or anything. But anyways. Anyways, um, she was talking about her brother Peyton. Okay, is this a Patreon video? Does anybody know that? I know her and Peyton don't get along good. So anyways, Katie says, I don't know why this come up. I don't know why Gwendolyn doesn't like me. 
But here's where things started. Apparently last week, Gwendolyn made a post on our Patreon saying that she really wanted to talk to me, but couldn't because I had her blocked. Katie then shows a receipt um, of a um, receipt from her, like paying for her membership with Gwendolyn for her Patreon. And she says that she has not been a member since January. But um, Gwendolyn has only had a Patreon since about January. So I don't know. Time I made payment for her Patreon was in January. On January 13th, $15 was taken from my PayPal account and sent directly to Patreon. And I was on her $15 tier and I was on part of her Patreon for probably two or three months. And I was blocked after uh, she actually blocked a lot of. Okay. So that's where she's showing like her receipt. Like this was the last time that I paid for her Patreon. This was January. She then goes on to say, and I watched it so you guys don't have to. She says, um, she says, that Gwendolyn apparently blocked a lot of people on Patreon back in January because a lot of her Patreon content was being leaked. She took a lot of her content was being leaked. So she just kind of went through blocking a lot of people that she thought it could potentially be coming from them. She makes it out like Gwendolyn like was unsure and just blocked a ton of people, right? She claims she had no issue with Gwen. She also claims that in the past, um, she also, Katie also claims the post that read on Patreon, Gwen provided no editing, did not come from Patreon. So this picture here that Gwendolyn posted that I couldn't really re read that well and it took me a minute to remember what it said. I knew that it said on Patreon, like on Patreon. And that was Gwendolyn's like proof that see, clearly you're taking stuff from my Patreon because right here you said on Patreon. So Katie is claiming that post that she made back in May where she said on Patreon, Gwen provided no editing for the video. Katie says that did not come from Patreon. I've not been a member of your Patreon since um, January. She says where it came from was TikTok. Katie says there are TikTokers that were taking Gwendolyn's pa Patreon videos and uploading them in bits to their TikToks account. And Katie says, I mean, what does this matter? Katie basically says, listen, I was blocked from your Patreon. You booted me, remember? So instead, I went digging on TikTok. She says, I went to TikTok. I went to Reddit. She also mentions a media outlet that would sometimes post content from behind the paywall, behind the Patreon. She literally admits, that she did go to these places digging for content on Gwendolyn because at the time the show was actually playing in May, Sister Wives was still airing. So it was a really hot topic. So she says, yes, I did go to TikTok. I did go to Reddit. I did, you know, keep my eye out on this media outlet um, to get any information of anything that was happening, you know, your way because the show was airing and it was a hot topic. Um, so she says the Patreon videos Here's the thing. Those TikTokers that are posting these videos, I guarantee you are saying, this is a video from Gwendolyn Brown's Patreon. So Katie knows still that it is coming from Patreon. And as a creator and someone that Katie has used Patreon as well, and she has members as well, she should be very respectful of that. If you get on TikTok and you see something that, yes, that TikToker took it from behind the paywall and they uploaded it, still kind of be like, well, do I want to take it as well? You know what I'm saying? Like you still probably shouldn't do it because it's not good like creator ethics, you know, because Katie, would you want somebody doing that to you? Katie, if you had a Patreon that you're uploading content to, would you want me to maybe not get it from your Patreon, but let people on TikTok upload it and then me go grab it and then upload it on my YouTube channel? No, you wouldn't want that because still it's very unfair to your Patreons. The people that pay to be a Patreon to yours, they don't really have to because somebody is taking it and putting it out there anyways for the world to see. You know what I'm saying? So she claims, I didn't steal it. You blocked me back in January, um, but I did go digging because you blocked me. I couldn't get it. So I did go digging. Um, this is what I thought was really interesting was this part right here. Now, Katie threw out here, she shows like, Herself trying to Google Gwendolyn and how she's blocked and la dee da dee da. Let's see. 
Ladies, I was so tired of flat hair that just stuck to my head. Uh -huh. and honestly, it was so Patreon in me. So I'm sorry, Gwen, that you are upset that I shared stuff from Patreon. I am sorry about that. I'm she literally says, so I'm sorry, Gwen, that you are upset that I share stuff from Patreon. <laughs> you know, sorry, my bad. So she is admitting that she knows. She knew. She knows. She knew. Katie knows a thousand percent that she took content that she should not have taken, regardless of if she was the one that like took it first. Um, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know. What's y'all's thoughts? If TikTok shares it, should it be up for grabs then? Or should somebody like Katie, who has things like this, that she wants other people to respect, should she be allowed to, is it up for the grabbings or somebody like her? Should she understand and not do that type of thing? I think me personally, like I have been a victim of this very thing happening. I used to do like videos a good bit for like members of Patreon, like back in like 2020 and 2021. Um, I used to do it a good bit. Like late at night, I would do a video and the only people that could see it was members and like members of my channel and members of Patreon. And then people paid to be a Patreon member and they screen recorded them and they put them up on YouTube. They put them up on TikTok. They put them up on Twitter. And it was really frustrating because at, then at, the, at this point, you feel like there's somebody in your inner circle that obviously really doesn't like you and they're not there because they like you they're only there to grab and run you know what i'm saying and take your content and it's it's an it's not a good feeling to feel when you think the only people that's gonna you know join my patreon is like my loyals and people that really like me and then you realize what well, that that's not the case and i have like a spy here you know what i'm saying so i feel like she shouldn't have done it. Um, it is like a creator. It should be like content creator code of ethics that would be respectful of people's Patreon. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Um, but I did think that it was really funny that she said, I'm sorry. She was saying about the grave and the baby and that because that was in May and I was definitely not in her Patreon in May. So I'm sorry, Gwen, that you are upset that I shared stuff from Patreon. Yeah, so she knows. She's aware. Um, let's see. At the end of the video, she says, I truly hope her patrons enjoy um hating on me. <laughs> and that's how she ends the video. I mean, I guess it does in a I guess it proves that maybe Gwendolyn blocked her but didn't remember. So she maybe she thought Katie blocked her first. Um but I definitely think it proves. Gwendolyn absolutely without a doubt proved that Katie come in there saying, Don't worry about me. I'm not going to take anything. I'm here in peace. I come in peace. Peace. This? I don't know. I come in peace. I'm not going to take anything. I'm so glad that she's found her voice. Da -de -da -de -da. But then when stuff starts getting leaked and Gwendolyn starts booting people, then she feels like it's up for grabs all of a sudden. So my thing is like, say Kate, Katie would not have gotten booted out of the um, Patreon. Would she have taken things for TikTok then, and just be like, "Oh well, yeah, I know I'm in your tic I know I'm in your Patreon, but I didn't get it from there. I got it from TikTok." You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I I think it's an issue that happens, and I wish YouTube and other places would be more. Um, I don't know. Have have like precautions in place and and measures that they take when this type of stuff happens. Like if Katie that post where she says on Patreon. I don't know. I feel like she should have got in some sort of trouble through YouTube when she clearly is saying on Patreon this happened, um, making it seem like she watched it. She knows what's going on and she's telling the people what happened on Patreon. So she's taking things from behind that paywall and putting it out there for her 365,000 subs to be aware of. Those 365,000 subs aren't paying to be a Patreon. Maybe some of them are, but you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're not paying that fee to be a Patreon to get access to that information. So therefore, they they should, you know. Um, before I subscribed to whatever, first of all, Anna was subscribed to Wins, Patreon, and Katie edit. Now Sarah from Reality C did not, was very furious, but not Katie. Um, I never watched KJ. This happened years ago. I saw from her a month ago. Not going to stop KJ. She'll have someone else do it. That's true. 
She took one one thing and did another. Typical KJ, that is true. Um, very, very, very typical. Um, are you asking why she hasn't been on camera? She claims she had an infected hair. And that's on her Facebook. Uh, I think it's on her Facebook. I saw it. Or it's on her. No, it's on her. Um, It's on her page. I, I can show you. I seen it while I go. It's, I think it's on her community tab. It's either on her community tab or her Facebook, but I actually think it's on her community tab. Right here. You guys see this? She says, hey friends, so rumor was I had plastic surgery, LOL. I wish, I wish it was something fun like that, but the truth was I had a massive ingrown hair near my eyebrow. It was only made worse by products that I used to coerce it out. Hot packs, ice, various creams, topical steroids all made it worse. Combined with my obsessive need to get it out and not knowing where the hell it was. About two months of about two months of voiceovers and finally today this sucker came out. I got close to getting it out a month ago. But today she was released. Holy crap. It hurt so bad when it came out. It was so dang long. Maybe three fourths of an inch in one piece and one fourth of an inch in another. The hair was had, had tangled itself around other hairs then brush itself deep into my, buried itself deep into my skin. There's a small crater on the side of my eyebrow at the moment. The good news is it's out. There are others now because of the mess I've created, but they don't hurt, so I'm going to leave them alone. Band-Aid on, Neosporin applied, and now we wait for the sucker to heal. I've tried every over-the-counter over the counter product and exfoliation, so I don't necessarily need any tips at the moment. I also did the hot compresses too. It took a tool I saw Dr. Pimple Popper use that can dig and break skin in a tweezer. My only regret is not having video of this. Happy 4th of July to you all. Tomorrow we're spending the day in our small boat ground pool and lighting off fireworks that don't blow up in the air. Happy Freedom Day to all in the USA, Katie. And here's the hair. That don't look like no eyebrow. That's a long eyebrow, unless... She's just very, very, very close up on it. And doesn't that look like a very long eyebrow? I don't know. Well, whatever. So. Oh, my goodness. All apologies. On a video, her words, I messed my face up bad. Oh, wow. You know, I... I hate to say this. There is speculation, and this is pure. Well, Katie has admitted that she takes, um, that she's got ADD, ADHD, and she takes, what is it that she takes for her? What is it she takes for her ADHD? Um, Adderall? Is it Adderall? Okay. You know what? Some people said that. Somebody said that looks like a dog hair, and she has dogs that shed a lot. So I'm wondering if somehow a dog hair maybe did get buried up in, could that be possible? Could a dog hair really get like buried up in your face? Okay, so yes, okay, Adderall. So I just know I've heard a lot that people that take, you know, large quantities of Adderall and things like that, they like to like dig. Not everybody, just people that, and I'm not accusing her of this. I'm I'm not accusing her of this. I just want to be clear on what I'm saying. But like people that maybe like abuse their prescription and take a lot, they tend to like dig on their face, you know. Um, so I love watching Dr. Pimple Popper as well. I have like some like, I mean, I don't want to call it a tumor, but I have this like knot on my back that's like right on my spine. Um, and I have one on my shoulder blade as well. The one on my shoulder blade is like deep down. It doesn't like protrude out of my back or anything. You have to like really stick your hand under my shoulder blade to feel it like a big knot. But the one on my spine back here, it does protrude off my back a little bit. You can see the hump. Um, and I've, I'm like, I kind of want to go to her to get her to like remove them. Now the one right here probably wouldn't be able to be removed. It is too, you know, don't you all dig for information and none of your stories are the first person. Um, I look for information. If I know, I'm not looking for information that's behind a paywall. I would not do that. If I come across information that says this comes from her Patreon, I'm not going to put that up because that's been done to me. 
And as someone that, as someone that offers memberships and Patreons, you don't want them people to feel cheated. You don't want them to feel like, well, why am I paying if it's getting leaked anyways? And then as the creator, you feel like you have a spy in your little close knit family. You know, like in your little close knit situation these people that are your your members that are paying to get that extra content you feel like there's someone there with ill intent and they are because they're there to take that content and then put it out everywhere else and a lot of times myself personally i was always more candor on my patreon always 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 i would always speak more um share more information about my life in general my maybe my family and stuff like that so to see, and like the, the first time that happened to me, I actually opened up about some problems that I had with some mods of mine that left me. And like, not only did they leave me, but they left me and like went hard for me to attack. me. And I finally opened up about it like a year after it happened. And I'll be dang if that was not shared and blasted everywhere. And then I had to worry about those moderators coming back. You know what I'm saying? Coming back to attack me. And they did. They did. They then they put out a video and it was just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And it and it sucks. So do will I say we dig? If I have a specific topic that I'm like really gonna cover, every day I get up and I check the Daily Mail, the Ashley, the Sun, TMZ. I, you know, check my email, see if anybody has sent me a story there. You know what I'm saying? Like I check certain outlets. Now, if I already know I'm gonna cover this. I will go and specifically type in the Google, blah, 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 blah. But if I see somebody say, this is from Patreon, I'm going to be like, I, I would feel right covering that. Or at least for sure putting it out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. But anyways, you guys, thank you, Shauna. Thank you so much. Castor oil will help with that shoulder L. Really? It's really deep in there. Yeah. I I think it's a lipoma because I had one before. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Thank you. Yeah, Jay Marie, you were around back then too. Yes. Valerie, yeah. I remember that with your rogue mice. That was horrible. It was really bad. Um, yeah, there's a level of respect, you know, that can be given to someone that digs for information. Dilig diligently and respectfully but i can't give respect to someone that just digs for whatever that they can find like pulling up people's financials um looking you know like me for instance like when my sister's background was ran and her husband's and like they they brought up family members of mine that i've never even mentioned to you guys <laughs> and these background checks like my background check was done my sister's like i think her husband's and then, like, our family members are popping up. And then you're getting access to my family members that I've never even mentioned on here because they don't want to be, like, they are about their quiet life. You know what I'm saying? So when you do that, when you are a creator that will go that far and do that, you know, to be like, oh, I tried to pull the birth certificate and the work history and the financial information for her dad. Like, Tati Westbrook. Like, Tati Westbrook's dad is not, he's just her dad. You know, I try. I couldn't get any work any work information from him, so it must be that he works for the mafia. That's literally what she said. That he must work for the mafia. You know, it's like, um, why are you digging for that? Like when she bought my finances and then went on Instagram and told people that I was about to lose my car. Girl, why are you paying for my back background my finances? Why? She has a a GMC Yukon. He has a Ford F two fifty, and they owe this amount. And the last time they made a payment was this. What? For what? You know what I'm saying? Like that is completely inappropriate in my opinion. Um, especially for like a small creator. Back then I had like 10,000 subs, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't know. It's just mm, I don't know. Uh we become the Ohio mom who allowed her child to start dehydrate. Home of the playpen. Well, I, yes, Appalachian. I actually have a video over on um the fatal files about that and I, I i need to do an update on it because she did have a court date the other day um so i need to do an update on it
All right, so here it is right here. This is my other channel, The Fatal Files with LB. Um, there it is, Fatal Files with L. And this is 16 month old baby girl dies after her mom goes on vacation for 10 days, leaves the baby home alone. So that is my video. Also, um, this was a video about Alexi Treviso's friends. Um, they spoke out about her. She was the one that had the baby in the hospital bathroom and put the baby in the trash can and the baby died. Um, and I don't know why this video was not like the whole screen. It was really weird. But, um, but yeah, uh, I got some more content that I need to put up on there. Um, but yeah, anyways, you guys have your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you guys think about Gwendolyn calling Katie Brown? Hey, Katie Brown. <laughs> Gwendolyn Brown calling out Katie on that crystal ball. Also, I do think Gwendolyn was being uh, sarcastic when she said, this is a Katie Joy hate page. I don't think she meant it. I think it was just a joke, you know, that she was saying. Um, I don't think she's going to turn her Patreon into a hate page. Um, so, yeah. We just went over the video that Katie put up. We just went over that video. Um, if she's put up anything else. Yeah. We just went over that video. So, yeah. Anyways, you guys, let me your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Also, you guys, I want to go over the uh, Katie, Katie Brown, <laughs> Katie Paulson and 7M new filings. If you have them or know where I can find them, please email me. I need to find them. Um, I looked at a few places that I thought they may be, but did not see them there um, because I do kind of want to go over them. I feel like several people are going over them. So if too many people have went over them and you guys don't want me to, let me know. What do you guys think? Should we go over the 7 a.m. new filings or no? Make it magic. Charlotte and EKC covered it. So that's why that's I'm kind of like, should I do it? I don't know if I should. Okay, I'll reach out to Charlotte and see if she could send them to me. EKC has them. R R E K C. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna see if I can get them, and then we'll go over them. Oh, send me an email regarding Janelle. I did a video about Janelle just a second ago. J Marie, was it anything about that? I think it was. Oh, I just see it. Okay, I just see it. I'll look at it in a little bit. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, I really like when Uncivil or like lawyers go over it because they know what they're talking about, you know, and they know if it's like a good filing or how it's going to probably look in regards to the judge. But anyways, you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys back here later. Bye.